Hey everyone, DJ Mike here. Today is August 26th. I can't believe August is almost over. Man, wow. Where has the time gone? Alright, in this video, we are going to talk about pricing. Why? Well, I got an email today from Kid Show Fanatic, and uh, he does have a YouTube page or channel, whatever you want to call it. And he, he just basically asked me that how do I price you know my packages um, you know how much for how long basically um, you know because he, he's wanting to know how, how should he go through it and price his stuff so um, we're gonna talk about a few different areas okay the first area that we're gonna talk about is your demographic where are you at okay are you in New York are you in Chicago Miami, Dallas, LA. In the bigger metro, uh, metroplexes like that, you're not going to be able to charge as much as someone, you know, say in Waco. You know, why is that? Well, it, it's, you know, it comes down to how many other DJs are in your area. Okay, so your demographic is not just necessarily where you're at; it's how many people are there. So, um, hang on a second, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip this song. But, uh, anyways, um, it, it's how many other DJs are, are competing for the same business that you are? You know, um, in, in Dallas, I think there's like 250 DJs. I mean, I may be wrong, there may be more, maybe less. Same thing with Austin. There's a, a, a large amount of them. So, are they going to be able to charge, you know, large amounts of money? Yes and no. Okay. The newer ones, you're not going to be able to charge but a few hundred dollars versus, you know, someone that's been in business for 30 years in one, in one town and has the reputation, you know, to get more money. So... Uh, surprisingly, I'm when it comes to weddings, I usually get more than what Dallas and Austin can, you know. And, and it's just because we have fewer DJs in the Waco area versus Dallas, Austin, Houston. So, um, but if you stay in the game long enough and, and you pay your dues, you know, just like Brian and, and Jonathan were saying, is that you got to pay your dues. And, and you have to do those, you know, little bar gigs and, uh, you know, you may have to DJ in the clubs or, or whatever it may take. But, but you're going to have to pay the, pay the dues. And as you do that, you're able to get, you know, bigger and better gigs. Okay. So your demographic is going to determine, you know, about how much you can charge. Another thing that's going to determine how much you get to charge is your experience. Have you been doing this for six months? Have you been doing it for ten years? Have you been doing it for thirty years? You know, um, I've been DJing since I was, you know, fifteen, and you know, I'm able to charge more than than someone that's been doing it for, you know, for five years. It just comes to experience. It's what can you sit there and and, and you're able to to provide for your clients so your experience uh, if you don't have a whole lot of experience um, I know Kid Show I, I saw your page and it, uh, from what I gather is that you're uh, a radio DJ that, that's experience right there okay even though it's not a mobile setup where you have to worry about the equipment you do have some of that experience of playing music now it's a totally different area when you go from a, uh, an air conditioned or heat cool, you know, venue or you know, venue, I'm gonna say, you know, studio, to an outside wedding, you know, in the middle of July when it's 100 plus degrees, or, uh, you know, where you have to go in and set up and tear down your own equipment. So it's a totally different, you know, area that that you have to deal with. But the good thing is that you, you have the start, so you're able to talk on the microphone without 
you know, have any problems without getting tongue tied as as much as, you know, some of us others. I, I still get tongue tied every once in a while. You know, it's just because I'm trying to go too fast. You know, my my mouth and my brain are not in sync with each other so that, you know, I, I do trip up. But I, usually I'm able to, you know, overcome that. And that's what experience, you know, teaches you is how to overcome a, lo a lot of the, you know, if a piece of equipment breaks down, or, or if you get tongue tied, or you mispronounce a, a you know a bride and groom's name, you know, you're able to fix that. But experience should also teach you not to do all that, you know, to maintain your equipment, to not to get uh, tongue tied. So uh, the next thing about uh, what it takes is your services. What can you offer the client? Are you a typical DJ that just goes out and pushes play on a CD player? Or are you one of those that go out and you entertain uh, the client and their guests and get them involved? Okay? Or are you the one that just brings out speakers and that's it? Or do you bring a light show? Do you have the capabilities of doing music video? All these things play into that. Okay? When, when it comes to setting up your packages, you need to sit there and think in your mind, okay, I know that if I go through and set up two main speakers on stands, two subs, you know, my CD player, mixer, case, a laptop, uh, eight park hands, now I'm just throwing stuff out there, um, you know, it's going to take me this amount of time, it's going to take this much effort, and then you kind of break it down, you know, because any gig is just not the four, three, four, five, six, ten hour, whatever it may be. It's everything that you have to do prior, the the searching for music, you know, setting up a timeline uh, to, uh, you know, setting up the equipment, testing your equipment, doing the gig, tearing everything down, and doing all your post-event stuff. It's not just go out, play music for four hours, and you're done, okay? So you have to think about, what is it worth to me to do this, okay? A rule of thumb that I came up with for me is anything... I have the during the gig and out of the gig. You know, and, and when I first started, I, I had to think about this. How, mu how much should I get paid to do the timeline. How much should I get paid to search for music? How much should I get paid to uh, have meetings and talk with the clients and get everything in order? How much should I charge for setting up, tearing down? How much should I charge for the actual DJ? You know, and it's, you don't sit there and break these costs down to give to the clients. This is stuff that you need to think about and then come up with a price that you, you in turn quote to the clients. So, um, what I came up with is um, for a basic party, uh, you know, birthday party, for instance. Um, if it's for a teenager, a kid, they tend to want more bass, and also I have to do the subs. Uh, so that takes more money. That's more money because it's more work. You have you have to load and unload subs and, and all that you know so you have to think about that um, versus a 50th birthday party you know for grandma you know or, or you know for for a mom and dad surprise birthday party which I have one coming up uh, but you know I had to think about that I had to think okay what would this person want okay Usually, when they're you know forties, fifties, and, and up, they're not. They don't care about the the club style line. They don't care about the strobes. They don't care about anything along those lines. Okay, what they care about is good, fun music and clarity. Okay, are they able to hear the songs, or is there so much bass that they're not able to hear the words? Okay, that's what they they want. Okay. So you have to take that into consideration. Okay. Well, 
this has already been like almost 10 minutes, so what I'm going to do is that we are going to do two parts, so stay tuned for part two.